Welcome to the Weekly Pick and Pack, the podcast about all things inventory. Pick and Pack, powered by Fishbowl. All right, welcome to the Weekly Pick and Pack. I am Nate Flake, your host and our co-host here. Nate Fulmer. All righty, today. So this is going to be episode one. We were deciding, debating whether to uh, throw it in the back, but we're gonna we're gonna do an episode one here. So we have a couple guests here. I'll let them introduce themselves. I'm Colby Sanford, full time on. <laughs> and I'm Zach Sylvester, implementer. Cool. So we're going to talk about um, today. That the theme is kind of going to be um, implementing change into warehouses, manufacturing, um, basically tips and tricks of how to. Uh, change people's processes who not all the time want to change it um so we'll start out with kind of giving a little bit of background so i know we know your names your titles so what do you so these guys colby and zach and both nates we also have done a lot of the training side and implementation side as well um but to kind of give you a background so anytime a company comes in and buys fishbowl they need to get trained on it right so Majority of the customers will want to have somebody come actually on site and do the training for them. Um, it, you know, a lot of these guys are going from Excel or going f- through or coming from just no system at all, right? And this is super applicable, like with any software, right? Like if yeah. you buy like a Salesforce or whatever, they'll give you the same options where it's like you yeah. can bring in somebody to train you guys how to use it. So, yeah, we, I mean, we even, I mean, we went through a Salesforce integration. What well, I guess that's almost been a year, dang. January last year, right? Still a work in progress, I'd say. <laughs> Wait, it's not ready yet. It's not done. Well, we're about um, to start the Zendesk. Zen, Zendesk yeah, we're doing Zendesk. Well, it's already in. It's already, I it's guess, in, in place. Yeah, yeah, we're the training's happening right now, but no one on the floor is using it or testing. Are they it sending it somebody here? Do you know? Uh, yeah, they are sending somebody here right now. Everything they're just going through is remote training right now. Oh, sweet. Yeah, but some, from what I understand, someone is coming for a couple of days. Shout out to Zendesk. <laughs> Zendesk is a great product, and they Never are seen it, sponsors of this podcast. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that ad just um, paid for the whole I don't for that. the whole software. I, I, I don't believe it for a minute. Um, so we're going to talk about Not mostly yet. kind of just like the some crazy stuff that you've seen, and worst case, best case as far as implementing. Um, we also want to talk about kind of the roadblocks to changing a whole process, right? And and we're talking specific to inventory management. Um, your pick, pack, and ship process, because believe it or not, you'd think there would only be a couple ways, but I, at least I've seen a stupid amount of ways people do it. Uh, <laughs> right? 100%. <laughs> Everyone has their own and little variation. ways of doing it. <laughs> exactly. Um, so anyway, so we'll start with that. So first question, I guess, for Zach and Colby, let's say, so you guys have been here both, I don't know, four or five years each, right? So... Um, You've seen a lot of crazy situations. What, like, let's say, narrow down your top couple worst warehouse situations. So you come in day one, and what, like, you come in, what, what do you see? Describe it. So, <laughs> so I did one in. This one was in Fort Lauderdale, and this let's company. Let's not get too specific, though. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, so the, this Birch company. Street in Orange. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this uh, this company they manufacture they basically would refurbish um, dental equipment. So this guy would buy out um, whole dental practices when like a dentist would retire, bring this, bring all the equipment in and he would refurbish it and resell it. And when the, like right when I came in, he asked me or like, you know, he was, let's do a tour, all this stuff. Yeah. And the area where he did all the refurbishing, super organized, looked really good. And actually from like the before and after pictures were unreal. Um, and then I was like, well, where do you keep, like, when you buy out of practice and you bring in all, like, the old, like, equipment before Stuff, it's refurbished, yeah. where do you, uh, like, where do you store all that? And we go out in the back, and he's got four storage containers, just not, no, like, not eco store or anything like that. And he opens up the doors to all four. Just pods? Yeah, pods. And it's, all it is is just old dental chairs stacked on top of each other, floor to ceiling. Stacks on stacks, baby. Shout out to pods. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it's just <laughs> like, zero organization to it whatsoever. I was like, do you even know how many chairs you have in there? He goes, no. He, like, just, was been sho- he was just shoving him in there. He's for just God shoving him in all. there, and he had one guy that somewhat knew, like, where certain parts were. So, like, when he's refurbishing a chair and needs to grab, like, an extra arm or a tool or a screw or, like, a base of a chair, something like that. Yes, the guy. There was no like form of writing, no like there was no f- 
like paper system, trail of yeah. anything. The guy just like, knew. So it was like a junkyard. Yeah, or going it to was, your like, yeah. house and like, hey, yeah. where's your, where do you keep your stuff? Like, where do you keep this tool in your garage? Exactly. Like only I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm taking that to the grave. By the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's exactly that. how this guy was. So he was like, yeah. And I and he just looked at me and he was like, I want to get this into fishbowl. I'm like, do you even have an account? Do you have any idea of what's in here? He goes, no. And I was like, we got to figure so that right, out so. and put some organization That's to a good it before. You were there for, that was a two day on site? It was a two day on site. So day one, you're just, day one, the whole day's wasted. Complete, like, I, it almost felt like everything I was doing from that point forward wasted, yeah. was, like, not really that important because that was the first thing that needed yeah. to get tackled before I came out there, anything like that. Because yeah. when I asked him originally, like, in the calls before, I was like, how, you know, do you have a good grasp on your inventory, everything like that? And they're like, yeah, we have a pretty good grasp. We have a good amount of stock. Like, that's all it went into. Got so, on. But I had no idea it was that bad. Colby, what's your worst? That's pretty bad. <laughs> Good was, luck stopping that. That's bro. the thing I know, right? Setting setting the bar pretty high. No, I was thinking Should about it with Zach, up. but uh, so okay, I'll make it up. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so I was in Salt Lake City. No, I'm kidding. Guys. But uh, no, I was thinking like the worst one I had was uh, just one company I showed up to, and I'm like, all right, let's do the tour, see what's going on with the business. They're like, all right, yeah, let's go through. And they're like, okay, we're going to do like a shadow tour. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? They're like, well, we don't have any equipment. We don't have any inventory. It's just pretty much just an empty warehouse right now. We're just putting in our internet and stuff. And but shadow, it's going to be shadow, awesome. And I'm shadow like, meaning oh, use right. your imagination? Yes. Oh, boy. It was all, we just kumbaya It was a cannabis company. So it makes sense. <laughs> Did it start out with like the magic school Shout bus, like intro yeah. song, like <laughs> as you started the tour? Like, here we go. You know? was it like, it was so really, they were just like having hallucinations. No, literally, so it was, I was really strong <laughs> stuff. Dude, I was there for two days and had nothing there. We just did walkthroughs of, okay, this is, this is where this machine's going to be. be. Yeah. Oh, this is God. what it is. And I'm like, I mean, it wasn't the worst thing in the world because it was easy to put in new processes with nothing yeah there. you're creating part so it's just like scratch. okay look here this is what you're gonna do once you get everything in right but i mean trying to fill a full day of training with absolutely nothing there and they don't yeah. have anything that's like the like kind like of thing that you're happy that they're doing like it's like yeah i'm glad right. that you're planning you're on where things will be for it but, but right. let's like do let's bring me out it. after you yeah. guys get yeah. it already. Yeah, exactly. I would so much have like. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say I'd much rather have that situation. Oh, you're than, yeah. way than worse. a crap. No, well, just in any process. I mean, no. yeah. starting from the ground up, <laughs> and you have the ability to like, because you know how fishbowl works. Mm -hmm. They don't know how fishbowl works yet, so you can help guide them so that their process matches exactly right how fishbowl will handle it best. I know, and that kind of speaks to my other onsites. I really haven't had one that bad. Yeah. Oh, that one so, was I miserable. mean, that's probably the worst I had. It's just like, all right, well, let's. Which, use yeah, our which probably. You probably. Yeah, after that, you're like, I need to like make sure you ask those certain questions. Right. A lot of time, people, though, I mean, I've had, I've had trainings where people don't like really want to talk before. Come I here, we'll figure it out. Those. I had like four or five companies do that. A lot of those. So, but like, if you're, if you're implementing a full, you know, like a solution like Fishbowl where it's like, this mm -hmm. is going to affect your sales, purchasing, your pick process, your pack process, how you ship, where you ship, mm -hmm. what you ship with. Like it's it's a lot. I mean, you guys, kind of, you guys kind of had two exact opposite scenarios. One where you already started with crap patterns, crap habits, mm -hmm. and then one where you just haven't started it with anything, right? Yeah. They just weren't like they sound like they just, they, just they pulled the trigger way too early with you. Way too early. So there's probably lessons to be learned of both, right? Like mm -hmm. with Zach's situation where you come in and it's just a complete shit show. Yeah. At least at least like you had something to work with. Well, the the next question I, I asked him, I was like, "Are you guys planning on shutting down for a bit and organizing these pods and finding out exactly what you have, like?" Or at least work in a weekend or something. Or doing something. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, what's the plan to get this organized to mm -hmm. like get an actual count of what it is you guys have? Because the other part of that too is they needed to go through and find out they some of those dental chairs and that inventory that was in there is not even usable. So he didn't even know. So he knows roughly how many chairs, but they need to do a whole QA check yeah. to be like, what's even salvageable? Yeah. Like what can I even refurbish? So I, I that was the the next question was where are you in any position to kind of slow stop things down and for stop second. for it and yeah, stop business and yeah figure out what it is you have and find and at least get a number so I can, you know, at least at the bare minimum know how many chairs and what usable inventories in each pod. A lot I'm of these companies the answer are, was no. Exactly. Yeah, a lot of these companies, <laughs> like I've been on that where they, I'm like, hey, you need to either work a weekend. Yeah. You have your Monday to Friday flow and a lot of these guys are like, have awesome management, their product's cool. Mm -hmm. 
So they're killing it. Like they're yeah. selling a crap ton of units. That's why they have the need for a system like Fishbowl, right? But they, like I've had that situation, same thing. Hey, you need to like, it's like if you're driving down the freeway, you miss your exit. Like eventually you're going to have to get off an exit. You can't just like keep driving on the freeway and expect you're going to get off that exit right. back there. You're gonna have to get off. Yeah, it's annoying to backtrack, but like you're gonna have to get off. The longer you wait, right. the further off you're gonna be. Unbelievable analogy. That was fantastic. <laughs> that's good, cool. good job. That, good that was so. Don't but, act like that wasn't planned yeah, out. Yeah, that was loaded. I want to see on. his phone. Somebody yeah, that's on yeah. his lap right delete, now. Delete, delete, delete. 100 has already been written out. Um, but but yeah, we've had companies that like won't. They're like, yeah, we don't really like. I don't know if our guys will stay for the weekend. I'm like, well, you're never gonna. It's like, yeah, you can keep selling and just running with this mess, but. It's funny. A lot of companies won't, won't, aren't willing. So I guess that's a good tip. Like, be willing to stop. And, like, especially if you oh, have a specialist to. come out. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you guys, but I had a lot of time where people were like, yeah, thanks for the advice, but, like, I, I think we're good. Like, I think we're going to do something else. All I right, think, cool. Yeah, okay. There's a ton of times that I, I feel like I had anyway where there's a huge disconnect between the person that purchased the system and the person that's going to be implementing the system. Oh, yeah, They're sure. like, they have no idea the kind of resources they've already put into it or the kind what of, like, committing. Right. yeah, or the kind of, like, financial interest they've already put into it yeah. right so it's like they're like oh yeah we don't have to delay or whatever just come out we'll figure it out that's the kind of thing where i was instantly like okay you need to talk to your boss for a second and talk mm -hmm. about what yeah, you've already put into this because you might be a little bit more invested once you figure out what he's talked about or she's talked about or whatever and like yeah. what they've put into this oh that's happened to me probably three times where i showed up and the person i've been on the phone with is is like the only person that knows I'm coming. Oh yeah, <laughs> and it's oh, just yeah. some like random. The admin. receptionist like, sorry, what? Who are yeah, you? Who are you? And you're like, oh, and it's like, hey, man, uh, and then they're like <laughs> introducing you. Oh, by the way, Fishbowl's here for three days. <laughs> and oh, they need half of your day to somebody, and they're like, oh, no, like sorry, I can't move. <laughs> that's it has happened all. It happens oh, a lot constantly. So uh, yeah, like be prepared for like when you do have someone come in, you know. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. I feel like we, I mean, even internally, we, it's not all the time. We're not always ready for stuff like that. I mean, our Salesforce <laughs> integration had some road bumps and stuff like that, but some road, some bumps in the road. Yeah, it's never going to go super smoothly, let's be honest. Um, my next question for Zach and Colby, what, so implementing, implementing a, like specifically an inventory system, right? You got to train the admin, you got to train sales purchasing warehouse is kind of usually the three groups right and accounting is kind of their own thing we talked yeah. about that a little bit with Asita and as an episode two we'll you'll hear that more for the accounting side we haven't talked about that yet we're gonna talk about it we already it's recorded the it. um so what is ideal training size for like what in your opinion uh, you know like one-on-one -on -one? is it is it 10 people in a room Obviously, you have to get that one on one time, but yeah. like, what do you think ideal? Um, ideally, retention? like, I don't try to get everyone at once to train. I usually like to split it up into, you know, what it is they're going to be doing. Yeah. Like, I mean, I do. I mean, my common on site, I go out there, first thing I do, do the tour, everything. Then I have the admins. Whoever is going to have the most control over Fishbowl, let's all meet. Let's do a brief overview. Yeah. Make sure we know who's working on what. Mm -hmm. From there, break it off and then just do your warehouse. Great. Let's grab like three guys, four guys from the warehouse, go through things. And obviously, like the biggest thing for me is getting people in and using it. Yeah. So I don't want like a huge group and be like, all right, all 10 people get on your laptops and let's get in Fishbowl and try yeah. and do it. Just hectic. And then answer 20 questions at a time. What's the biggest group you've done? Biggest group I've done. Um, and why did it suck? Mine wasn't. <laughs> Just assuming it probably Because it was sucked. a big group. <laughs> they were a big group. Probably <laughs> the biggest group I had was like 18. Yeah. That's a good size. I man. know you had like a stadium once. <laughs> it was the w yeah. Kevin Hart over here. <laughs> so it, it, it blew me away. I was <laughs> <laughs> super <laughs> nervous the whole I time. Couldn't. You're like walking. It's like fog <laughs> and like dark. You're like, we're going to bring Zach out. <laughs> Just music. <laughs> 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 it's like, what the hell? I'm in an MLM meeting. Dude. I couldn't <laughs> fathom. And like that was a training, but they were super on top of it communicating with me really well and I felt like I knew exactly what I was walking into and when I pulled up to the building it was a massive company like, you know you don't really know the size and then you pull up to the building you're like oh there's a lot of people in here you know and um <laughs> hey this looks like it could fit a lot of people <laughs> like that's it's honestly the first thought that came to my mind I'm like oh there's a lot of like there's a lot to this oh wow yeah you know and um when I so it, the, the training group ended up being like about 40 50 people mm-hmm 
but when I walked in, this 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 building had a full auditorium where they and it started out and like they introduced me to all like. 250 people in the oh, company. Oh, oh, so my oh, first introduction was in like an audit, like it looked like a university like class setting. Everyone's there with their computers and stuff like that. Did and was introduced like, hey, like this is our new inventory management system. Zach's going to be here implementing it. We're excited. Like they wanted to let the whole company know we have a new inventory management system coming in. Here's Zach's cell phone number. Text him if you have any questions. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. It's yeah. like, on the big screen. I, so did they have, make you like say something? The worst. Like I pretty much just, introduce yeah, they were yourself. like, yeah, introduced myself, told them what Fishbowl was about, like, yeah. you know, why, because <laughs> I had calls with, before, with them before of how they were tracking their inventory and how Fishbowl was going to make that better. Yeah. It was pretty much like they wanted me to hype Fishbowl and how it was going to like. Just get anyone rallied. Just straight Tony Robbins, everyone. It you was, get a username. Yeah, you yeah, get yeah. a username. <laughs> You can use your name. It's totally you ended with, and thank you, for, thank you for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> and luck, but luckily, like after that was done, it was like 10, 15 minutes. Like everybody cleared out, and then it it was still pretty and big. It was, it was like yeah, and then it, it went from groups from there. But that's how it started. And I was like, if I had, and it was a three day in Canada, oh, and I was like, this is oh, if it's all day. <laughs> like, did they shut down their whole entire thing Just and all two hundred fifty people here this whole time? Probably that's the nice thing to do. How nice that's what Canada that, does. Yeah. <laughs> They probably the all shook around after. <laughs> we love Canada. We love with their we boat. Love. Yeah, we love, I love with their boat. boat. <laughs> Sorry, Canada. Sorry. Sorry. Um, By the way, know. going into Canada, nicest customs agents I've ever talked to in my life. Really? Yeah. They're no nice. surprise. In Toronto. Are nice. you serious? I know. I got held yeah. up. No, for three hours, and then had to sit in a. But were they room. super polite? They were very polite. See, there you go. But and it was true. I didn't have my paper. I had to have like a proof of sale or a proof of purchase. It's and called I a passport, Zach. You didn't no, have that. I, <laughs> no, <laughs> proof, I, I proof of, of, of um, purchase person? in America. <laughs> uh, please. <laughs> so I ended up having to show like this judge in the airport my phone to like show judge? all an yeah. airport judge. <laughs> yes, I think it's just a pilot. How do you get that? What, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> but this guy had to go through my phone and basically confirm that I wasn't coming to like take a Canadian job. I was coming literally just to train and get right back out. Oh, how funny! So yeah, like they had to. Jobs. They're here to so, make jobs, baby. Yeah. Well, that's right. wild. We're here to make them, so, not take them. So back to the question: What's ideal training size for you then? I would I would agree with Colby. I mean, it's somewhere three or four. Yeah, like three or four. And and the other thing that I think goes along with that is not trying to have too many admins in the room when you're training on a certain process, like a sales yeah. or a purchasing process. Well, because a lot of the times the admins are a little bit not they're not completely knowledgeable on how yeah. they're running sales orders and purchase orders and things like that. Yeah. So sometimes they'll hear. They're aware with like how it should be done, but how it actually happens exactly. is another story. Yeah, like so then how it's done at this yeah, school, so, but yeah. like how it's done at this company. Yeah. Right. So this yeah. company's been doing sales orders some, one way for four or five years, no problem. But now an admin sitting in and listening to this process because we're implementing Fishbowl. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, why are we running it this way? We shouldn't be. And then it turns from a Fishbowl training to a, we need to fix how processes. We're, like, there are a yeah, lot of efficiency fixed. things here yeah. we could figure out. Exactly. Yeah. So sometimes I, in those moments, it's good to have the admin in if they do, if they want to take advantage of that. But... Anyway, I guess I see there's two ways to do it. You can have the admin in, or if you feel like the process is fine, yeah. if the admin's out, then you can just work on taking the process they currently have. And yeah. Put it I like I, I'd almost rather prefer, because I've been in both situations where, and I think between the four of us, we have like probably, I don't know, 120, 130 on sites, right? Uh -huh. Of multiple. So oh, probably right. over 300 days of training. Yeah. Full days. So, and like, so I think. We've probably seen it all, but it's almost I, a year. I actually, yeah, that's almost a full year. <laughs> that's all Nick. Just, Sean, just Sean's quick our fact checker. Hey, will you uh, look up what, how, <laughs> how many, many days, days are in a year? About 300? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's We're going to be calling on Sean for Sean's our, like he's, Sean's he's like our guy. Google guy. He didn't want to get yeah. on the mic. Oh, yeah. Sorry. We forgot to introduce Sean again this morning. <laughs> this morning. At the beginning. <laughs> at this morning of the podcast. <laughs> We're um, to the evening stage I, of the podcast. I don't know. I don't know how podcasts work. Or, uh, or I didn't know they had mornings. I don't either. Obviously, we're figuring it out. Clearly, we're figuring it out. That's too good. Back to our Canadians, and our building is also under construction. So if you hear some pounding, that's <laughs> good luck. Um, so lost, lost what I was talking about. My lost bad, bro. It. Sorry, no. I, training. I, I kind of went off. Sorry, full the, year. Full year. Training. We're really talking about training. training. You were talking about oh, your experience. Here we go. So I. What do you guys think? So I like it. So you're talking about like admins wanting to admins change being the process, in, Because right? then the tree, I've seen admins come in and like instead of getting Fishbowl <clears throat> implemented and trained on, it turns more over of like the admins trying to insert how they feel like things should be done at certain processes. But I like, I like, I almost prefer coming into a company like, yeah, you can say, okay, this is how you use Fishbowl. 
This is how majority of people pick back and ship. This is how they, you know, run a sales order. But I almost like prefer when you come in, you come into a shit show, they realize what they're doing isn't right and they're changing process to match what a good process should be. Mm-hmm. Instead of just saying, hey, we have a crap process now, but we're going to sh- force that into fishbowl. Yeah. Right. I almost prefer like when they change the process. Yeah. It's like annoying, that happens like more often, but than it's not, way too. more lasting though yeah. when you leave. 100%. Yeah. You're like, oh, cool. I actually it's like help change these guys' process, their internal processes. Right. And then they, instead of like, because I've had opposite where they're like, oh, yeah, we do this and this and this and this. And you're like, well, that's like awful. This is the worst process I've ever heard. Like, yeah, we're just going to, we've been doing it forever. Yeah, it's what we're we going to keep doing it. And we're like, yeah, but this is the perfect time, like right now with me here. To change that. To change the process. Or to now at least like discuss system. a different option. Yeah, discuss yeah. it. But don't like, especially with repetitive stuff and yeah. printing out 14 reports of the same thing. Like, ugh. Have you guys had that experience though, where like so an owner's in a room it. and he kind of doesn't fully grasp like What's everything that goes into it, but yet he's trying to make changes just because like he's so disconnected from that process. From reality, right. yeah. He doesn't yeah. Know yeah. yeah, I'm all about changing because fishbowl implementing fishbowl naturally is going to make you change your process in a way to where it's more efficient. Like yeah. Yeah. Not, you can't have a crappy process and use fishbowl. That naturally is going to happen anyway. Yeah, it's when you have that it. admin or that owner that's just way out in left field, where yeah. even you have like the employees. I've been in many where they're like rolling their eyes being like, dude, he just doesn't get it. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't. And and that's like my thing. I usually like no offense to owners, usually keep them out of it because they're not a part of the day to day. That's, and that's what fishbowl deals with is your day to day processes. I usually keep them out and say, okay, who's in charge? Who's my fishbowl? Who's your operations guy? Yeah. Yeah. Who's going to be in charge of this? When I go, people come to you and talk to them. They're my admin. And I say, okay, let's get you in on this. And yeah, sometimes we do have that whole, butting heads but then usually i like to go to bat for whoever's in charge of that process so if the sales manager is like well this is what we do and of course it all comes down to kind of how nate said whatever process is going to be best for them in the future rather than saying hey this is what we know let's keep it that's who you go to bat for and say okay well let's do this because let me show you A, B, and C yeah. and how that's going to make everything smoother because once you're done here, it's going to this person. Or, hey, how you've be been doing it obviously garbage. isn't working that well because <laughs> right. you right. just bought a whole new system. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So let's figure it out. Yeah. I think, yeah, I don't know. I was just going to say, I feel like with the number of people anyway, like I'd almost prefer to have two or three than the one-on-one trainings though mm-hmm. because they kind of like feed off of each other questions rather than just mm-hmm. like having the one-on-one where it's like, yep, 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 yep. Got it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Like I feel. But like then if you get a group that's too big, oh, like then there's nine too or 10, much feeding off of each other. Yeah. Or then everyone's too scared to say anything, and they're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyone? Yeah. Any questions? And you don't want to be the dumb guy that's like, yeah, can you do that whole thing again? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You know. <laughs> yeah. What was that first step? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can we go I didn't see your mouse. One? Yeah. Well, the Where best is when they're from? like going through different scenarios of all these different ways they can use it, and they're just expecting you to sit there and listen and basically chime in if they are going through a process like that won't work in fishbowl. Like I've had a couple where they're like. Just listen, and if we're going down a road that won't work with Fishbowl, just stop us. I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm just perfect. I'm gonna referee this conversation and be like, oh, right there, you're out. No, that's not gonna. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I'm in the room with people like full have like full blown like blow ups in each other. Those That's the, the best. I love those. I've had admin just storm out of the room. Sit oh, yeah. Popcorn, dude. Yeah. And then someone usually turns, sorry about that. I'm like, oh. <laughs> like this yeah. is the best part of my day. No one was <laughs> yelling at me. I'm happy. Yeah, yeah seriously. It's like sit the anger off room. me and onto somebody <laughs> else. It's so true. Yeah, I had a guy like I'm sorry lead. when you see this on social media later because yeah. I was filming the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just hashtag feud. Hashtag warehouse feud. It's so true. Yeah, they. Uh, I've had someone leave in the middle of an onsite. Like one of the project managers got so pissed, like, "Hey, you figured this out?" And just left, the, like, left really? home for the day. Oh wow! It was like ten o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Sounds like a good day. Be a just great like, oh, this is a good start. <laughs> it was gonna be a good, good day. <laughs> it's. I feel like for it's always the controller of the company that has the hardest time. The hardest time. Like the when you deal with those like smaller, like the small size companies mm-hmm. where they usually hire one person that's really in charge of all logistics of the company. They're the ones that are usually the. Like most no. like the most frustrated things like that because they have their they've pretty Processes much built this whole place. company like yeah exactly yeah. they've they're the ones that spun this web of how this company works mm-hmm. and fishbowl nine times out of ten is gonna create it, it does it creates a whole new web and oh, they're yeah. just super sketched out on how it's gonna work with QuickBooks and yeah. I mean there's all these question marks to them so I, typically controllers for me are the ones that get like and they're 
they're the most frustrated. Most frustrated. Yeah. Well, because yeah. even if they know that what they're doing isn't necessarily working, they've already figured out like the how to get how around to get that around. or how to like yeah. fix it or whatever. So now that it's bringing a whole slew of new problems basically to exactly. them, right? It's like mm-hmm. it's just too much stress to handle. Exactly. Even though it's going to be fewer issues, right? Yeah. They just don't know how to deal with those issues, but they know how to deal with the other huge issues well, that they they've like already a, dealt they with. They always have 101 questions, and you want to, but they want an answer, and they like they need to, they want to see it, and it's yeah. like yeah. let's. We got to get this implemented, get your part. Like we have to get all your data and things like that. And then you'll be able to see it happen. I can't display that. I can't. We can play hypotheticals all day long. You got to trust me that we're going to get to that. You almost have to do all your remote, like all your remote prep hours with just a controller before you leave. Right. I agree. Because then they don't get on. They don't suck your time. Yes. Which, yeah, because then otherwise you're going to get there and it's just like, okay, I'm literally just appeasing this guy, the whole guy or girl the whole time. Um, What is... So here's another question for you. Talking about the controllers are usually most resistant. What do you think the biggest roadblock, like the biggest kind of roadblocks are for change, like to change? Like what are what are the biggest, What are, like what are, you know, do you understand the question? Did I yeah, yeah. That, right? just like what's Yeah, you know, what have you seen? That, yeah, what are like you get there and like here's the biggest roadblock we always have mm-hmm. to get through. And it's consistent theme. Every time, right? And so when you're doing something like um, like a system like Fishbowl where it's going to touch a lot of different parts of their business, mm-hmm. it's not just a tax software or a, you know, a, sh- a shipping integration. Yeah. It touches so many different things. What do you think the biggest roadblocks are? And then I'll come back and tell you what I think mine is. It might be. I mean, mine spins back to like that first onsite that I've been <coughs> talking. It's usually getting account like physical inv- accounts of inventory is yeah. t- is a really common one for me it's like when are you guys going to finally have and know exactly like we want to start fishbowl off right and have the right counts and we want fishbowl and quickbooks to match as far as your inventory valuation summary all that but we have to do a physical account to get that done and it's i've seen that be a roadblock many times where it's like we just do not have the time because they're small medium-sized companies so every day is just on the go they're just trying to get orders out and bring orders in as quick as they can they don't have a lot of downtime to do those physical counts. So I feel like in like a more broad sense, I'd I'd say it's like having your database set up, right? Like Mm -hmm. having everything set up and ready because you can't train on something that's like a test database, right? Like it's like, I mean, I can all day, but it's not going to be perfect to your processes or what you're doing and it's not going to sink in and make sense. Yeah, I guess, yeah. Even before you get out there, that's right from day one, that's the first thing we're trying to get out of them is like send me, you know, send me all your data or I'm going to, or get your data in. You know, if they don't purchase a database migration, it's like we're showing them how they can get data into their database and it's taking the time to get the data into the software so we can you know test using their actual process their actual materials units to measure things like yeah. that. yeah and even yeah. if you have to start over a hundred times <laughs> right do it because yeah. if it's not right to begin with yeah, crap it's in, never crap gonna out. be right yeah. yeah yeah like you've got to spend the time to get it in right yeah and i think that, i mean if you're listening to this and you are considering change and i'm not just saying hey if you're considering buying fishbowl if you're doing any sort of software change or implementation or program change yeah, you have to put in the freaking legwork before. Absolutely. It sucks. Like, I mean, getting on Salesforce was a huge chore for our company, but, you know, on Zendesk, it's probably going to run into its own issues. But if you mm-hmm. don't do the proper prep work, it's just a joke. Yeah. And, it, and people and get so mad. Like, for me, it all comes down to, like, that priority of knowing what you're doing. Like, you purchase this software. You're having someone come out to train you on it. You should know, hey, I should have this set up before they come out here or else... You know, they're going to give me some spiel that I'm not really going to understand. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, like I've had both those scenarios. Well, more commonly, it's I try reaching out to the company and I talk to them like twice before I even get out there. Yeah. So we're both not on the same page. They don't know what I'm about (laughs) to do and I don't know what I'm getting myself (laughs) into. So it's just kind of confusion when I get there or you get like the company I just went out to that I'm doing implementation for. I come in and the head fishbowl person is like giving me a PowerPoint on their processes and yeah. how he's already put this data in. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, Let's you go. know exactly what you're doing. You're obviously see this as a priority. And how much smoother. Yeah. Like it's so much smoother. Like yeah. I have phone calls with them and it's usually, okay, yeah. we'll do this and this. Okay. Let's catch up in a couple of days. See where we're at. Yeah. 
super simple. Whereas like they're willing to put in leg work off the phone. Exactly. So it's not like the only work they're doing is when they're on the phone with you. And yeah, then when they're exactly. off, they're not doing anything behind the scenes to get so prepared for you. coming. We're not having other phone calls later on where they're like two hours long. Cause we're trying to put out a huge fire cause they didn't put in any work beforehand. Yeah. And they're trying to hit a certain deadline mm-hmm. that an admin way up high, it, like set in. Yeah. I don't think, <laughs> Is there a woodpecker in here? Oh, are we? Tapping a... Is that someone tapping Where on the thing? Is no, that yeah. the TV? No. It's not the TV. Are we the... Um, yeah, I don't know. Someone's up on the third floor tapping. <laughs> are we in the upside down? Are we in the upside down? Are we in the upside down? Cue the music. We need a soundboard. I think we're good. We need a soundboard. That would be amazing. that. Get my Downton Abbey ringtone. Downton Abbey. Get out. That would be awesome. Um... Coming back to what you were saying, yeah, it's it's crazy how people don't like realize how much work, mm-hmm. not like fishbowl specifically, but like how much your this is like you know your day to day program, right? right? <laughs> and so it's up above us, dude. <laughs> so Sean's panicked. People <laughs> people don't realize like hey, after we leave, like I'll, I've done trainings where you go on the training, you go on site, you do the training with them, and then like you you ride them, you know, a couple of days after you get home or the next week check in, like oh yeah, we haven't really. We haven't really opened it since you left. <laughs> yeah. How many times have you heard that? Oh, dude, oh, I'm like, okay. So many. I'm not, so I'm many not coming times. back, you know. Well, I guess I could. But I can come back if you want to yeah, pay yeah, for Yeah, yeah, if you want to pay for another visit. But it's like crazy to me. But I think that, w- weren't you telling me, Nate, another, this, we had this conversation like this like months ago. You probably don't remember. But isn't there some crazy percentage of like if, like projects, I thought maybe it was you that gave oh, us something, that. Oh, it's, it's something like 85% of projects in general fail. Because because they don't put in the initial um, the initial prep the like initial, initial resources setup. Yeah, required yeah. yeah so the people are like let's say with this right they buy a fishbowl that's like a part of the resources right and then you got to pay for training but then you got to pay for your people to actually learn it mm-hmm. on their own mm-hmm. make mistakes with it and then implement it yeah. right um, fact checker here we go pulled up all our hours Sean oh wow oh, so nice. we actually do we were actually decently close. Woo-hoo. Those are so hours, between, though, not days on site. No, that's the, what I'm concerned about. Days bottom. 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 I know, but that's just so on the very total so training. he pulled our all of our right. hour training hours, I guess, Tra- total training days at at Fishbowl. It's not on site. So between all of us, we have okay. 444 days. Is Minor it more than a year? <laughs> Let's give a thumbs up. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yep, it's confirmed. 445 <laughs> days is more than a year. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Quick Google search. Yes. Quick Google. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but I think that's the reason that most like I, I would agree. I would almost say that stats almost higher because when everyone goes into a project, no one ever. I feel like the natural thing to do is what's the minimum amount of resources I can put at it for yep. it to be successful. Yeah. yeah. And right, you don't think about the mistakes. Your you don't. Instincts, yeah. Yeah. Your natural thing is okay. What like <laughs> what's, what's the, the minimum quickest, amount of work you know, yeah, I can yeah. do yeah. to make this work? <laughs> well, and you hit that first roadblock, and it's like, nah, oh, not gonna work. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Hundred percent. Like you have a company that's like, oh, coming out here, I want to be live in a month and. All, All of right. us that have done these trainings were like, that is a, Not and we even warn them saying that's a lofty mm-hmm. goal. Well, we need to make it happen, things yep. like that. And then that's exactly, you hit oh, one Oh, and we want to track by serial number, lot number, and by expiration date. <laughs> oh, and I want my whole warehouse oh, yeah. barcoded. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd say that's, that's something that I came across a lot that people would be upset with is like, they'd, it, they, they were kind of like a smaller shop or whatever, right? And it, yeah. they're just used to going back and getting whatever they want and pulling it and just bringing it up. Like there's no real count that they're doing. Mm-hmm. And so it was like, you introduce, no, you need to like scan this as you grab it, or you need to like actually, like, I don't know, pull your inventory count down every time you take something out. It's like, well, that takes longer. It's like, well, well yeah, but it's accurate. Well, yeah, duh. Yeah. And it's like, they'd be upset that like, oh, this was supposed to make things faster. And it's like, no, you can't be faster than literally running and grabbing something and just getting yeah. rid of it. Like that's, that's, that's there's nothing there. faster there's than not, that. Yeah. No. But you're going to be way more accurate this way. Yeah. Like I had a couple of companies that that was like uh, news to them. <laughs> Like wait, we're slowly down. Yeah, it's like wait, this is supposed to make us more efficient. It's like yeah, well, well accurate. Yeah, it, it will in the long run. <laughs> yeah. Uh, biggest roadblock for me. It's probably. I mean, it's mostly what you guys have been talking about, but just surprises. Yeah. And that comes with like prep work, mm-hmm. not wanting to do an inventory count, which can come as a surprise for a lot of people. <laughs> just a little bit. But yeah. just like if you don't do the initial discovery, a lot of times like oh, I, you know, a lot of people like especially it's happened to me probably ten times where I get on site and. So they'll say like, oh, we know we actually need this plugin, or we also need to integrate with this random custom system we have. 
I'm like, dang, I should have like found that out before. So you have yeah. to ask like a million questions, run through their process. But yeah, surprises are always the biggest roadblock, right? You're on mm -hmm. day two, you're on you're you're going live basically, and they're like, oh, we also need to link in this merchant from Japan. You know, <laughs> oh, but that's oh, no big Japanese deal, right? System, yeah, it's not a big deal. <laughs> Flip yeah. switch, right? Like, yeah. wait, wait, um, what? Yeah, just click yeah, a button. My, my nephew made it in his basement. <laughs> he did the API for it in Japan. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. what? Let me call that real quick. So then. <laughs> And then it just throws off the whole thing. Mm -hmm. It's bad news bears. Um, here's another thing I wanted to ask you guys. Um, I've kind of like, I've had some talks with other trainers. What is What are your thoughts on having, you, you kind of, one of you mentioned this, of having like that champion or whatever, that person that goes to, that like you come in, they're the point of contact, and it seems like they're the only one defending the implementation of the system. Mm -hmm. That happens mm -hmm. all the time, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. You either have one, you either have one or the other. Which happens more often? You either have the guy that's a champion of it. It's like, oh yeah, Fishbowl can do this, so great, or whatever system can do this. Um, and then you have the other guy. And I think Nate, you mentioned a story about this where, in every meeting, they're the ones trying to like trip you up and like make comments and like, oh, this will never work. They're like the naysayer, complete yeah. opposite of someone who like wants it to work. Mm -hmm. Which on which one happens more? I say naysayer. It happens way more than someone who's like who's yeah. like assigned to make fishbowl work. That oh, was their job. There's always the Beth in accounting that's been there for 500 years. And then <laughs> yeah. probably edit that part Shout out. Shout out to all the Beth. <laughs> Shout out to all the Beth. Uh, <laughs> uh, actually, it looks so like Sean just fact checked Nate. that. And yes, that is true. Okay. <laughs> um, no, but there's always like the person that's like, that's been there for a long time. Or the controller, or that's like, like he was saying. Yeah, that, that might already his... be like getting ready to retire almost even. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, I don't need to deal with this yeah. when I'm only going to be here another year. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? And that's those are the ones that I feel like are the ones that are like, we've already tried a million different things before. And <laughs> um, they, they haven't panned out or they haven't worked. So why is this different kind of thing, you know? Yeah, I would say the naysayer is definitely more common. And typically you're, you're you know, basically champion like person that's there helping you is the one that was the guy who pulled the trigger on the software like his next the one on the line whether or not if this like succeeds oh, or fails like that's yeah. that's typically who that guy is like no guys like he was in on all the demos he's the one that vetted out he's Fishbowl seen it all work yes mm -hmm. yeah like he's typically the guy that's really um that you know is really he has your back He'll defend you in those meetings yeah. when you have a purchasing. Like I just got off a call where the, one of the guys in purchasing, he wants to have the the revision level in the part number. Yeah. And I told him, I'm like, well, Fishbowl does revision tracking, and the reason it won't work is because if you have multiple revisions, you can't have three part numbers to represent one part, whatever. And he's the one that hops in on the phone and like, or well, basically the purchasing guy gets all upset. That's how I've done it for years. And yeah, then yeah. my champion guy, like, he's the one that steps in and is like. No, no, no. This is going to be better in the long run. Like yeah. we got to make these changes and kind of defends you. Yeah, I've actually had to Nate's fact about the five, the Beth who's been there forever. I've actually had a couple times where it was the accountant that was like the champion. Oh yeah, yeah. that's the best. actually oh, it's yeah. either an accountant who's like super on board. You know, like I remember I did one in Des Moines where the the guy who was accountant had been there forever was like, this is going to make my life so much easier. <laughs> but then I've also had the opposite where. You're like that. I don't want to see. Any yeah, it's usually those people that want to see like books. things in a specific way yeah. that are always like, oh, well, I can't have it coming in that way. Yeah. But yeah. a lot of times with those accountants, like the one I was just on, she was like, wait, so I just come in and the invoices and bills are going to be there. They're already yeah, there. They're just going to be there. Okay, great. I'll I'll come in later. Anything else yeah. later? <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, gone. great. Cool. And that's that's the thing. I feel like the people that have the hardest time are the people that have a hard time like relinquishing control. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? Like it is those people that are like, no, I'm used to seeing it like this, but on the report now it looks like this. Yeah. I don't like that. I don't like that. Like, yeah. Well, it's still the change same the information. Yeah, change your process. And you don't need to know the specifics of everything right now that's on that report. Really what you need to know is that total. And they oh, yeah. have a hard time coming to that I, realization. I had, a, I had a training where they actually wanted to return fishbowl because of that because some of our reports didn't show exactly how they wanted it and they were right. like nope we're done yep and i was like the overall reports like like the information's there yeah it's just the way that it's showing that information yeah but i mean and to answer the question as well naysayers are more common but yeah it's important to find and i try to find that out early on who those champions are going to be yeah you have to and then Kind of just, just hold the hang out. I, yeah, I kind of <laughs> lean on them. I'm just kind of like, sure. all right, well, 
these people are pissed. Yeah, Sarah, like, Sarah, on. you got it. <laughs> yeah, this is you. Like, you know? oh, come on. Because I think it's yeah. more common with companies, the guy that pulls the trigger on the software is not a part of the oh, implementation no. process at all. Yeah. And typically, that person doesn't vet it out the best, you know, yeah. as thoroughly as it should because he's not as connected to the day-to-day process. Right. So, you know, he gets on the phone with the sales rep, hears a few buzzwords, revision tracking, serial tracking, yeah, pick, pack ship, it out, it and he's like, yeah. oh, it does all that perfect, and then, yeah. like, moves on. We'll and figure then it out, yeah. The other thing that I think is pretty important um, is with that champion that you do have or whatever the assigned champion is a permanent employee of the company. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Sean and I actually went on an on-site. It was my very first one. He was training me. Um, and the shout company that we went to, they, yeah, <laughs> shout out, Sean. Is this a fact? Yep, fact checked. Checker. It's true. Um, <laughs> so it was actually the person that was in charge of that was the person that was supposed to be in charge of everything. <laughs> the person that was supposed to be in charge of everything was on maternity leave. Oh, no. And so they had, like, a temp there for, like, three months. And we were there for the last month of that person's three months. And so we (laughs) trained them. And then, obviously, they're gone. It was like, oh, you guys didn't teach us anything. And I was like, actually, we did. They're gone now. But it was a temp. So they're gone now. So good luck. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that was rough. We went back out. Or I did. (laughs) Sounds like you're on your own now, buddy. Yeah. Fly. (laughs) You can do this. Well, Peacock, you got to let me fly. (laughs) (laughs) So the takeaways, the takeaways from that. Oh yeah, and then Sean's pulling the pulling the facts here. So Beth is actually not the name of every accountant. Nate, no, just so you know. Sometimes Sean, I think you take your job too seriously. So I thought we were six. editing that part out anyway. What is this? The top <laughs> names. The most common names for an accountant. Most common names for an accountant. Really? I love how he has it already. Okay, we're gonna give him. This is everything. like probably the most useful information people are gonna get out of this podcast. Okay. I'm top six names. Colby, let's. You're, you're the closest. You do it. Of accountant. Yeah, also, top, they're top names. six names, most common names for accountants. Top six. So there's Curtis with a K, which blows my mind. Mindy, Adele, Mitzi, Maribel, and what is that? Charmaine. Maribel is actually what I meant to say. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> that was the I second one. I said Beth, Maribel. Yeah, those I, met a, I met a Curtis, actually, with a C. Um, okay, so, so lastly, let's wrap this up. Yep. This is good. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> we should probably have a disclaimer at the very beginning, too, by the way. This is, this don't entire podcast is not all going to be about fishbowl all the time, I promise. <laughs> and then don't take any of this stuff seriously. Um, okay, last. So for the tip of the day, we're going to give you kind of leave you with a tip here for inventory. So, I mean, I guess we kind of left you with some tips, right? Figure out your crap before your trainer gets out there. If you're going to implement a new system, you have to put in the prep work. Don't surprise the trainer or whoever's implementing any of your systems. Or your staff. Or your staff. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. probably the biggest. Don't surprise your staff. Hey, yeah. fishbowls. Hey, here. everything's What's changing this week. Bowl? Surprise. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's happened so many times. <laughs> <laughs> so, true. so rough. Okay. So we're going to talk about uh, for your for your inventory trick of the day, trick of the week, I guess, uh, how to set your reorder points. So for, you, for those of you who are... Don't, don't know what we're talking about. You probably shouldn't be listening to this podcast or else it's probably kind of weird that you're listening to Weekly Pick and Pack and you have no idea what a reorder point is. But so your reorder, reorder point is going to be, what's the easiest way to explain it? Like if you have stock and um, it's your reorder level point is when the company should create a purchase order to replenish that stock, right? So let's say you sell, go back to the t-shirt example, you sell t-shirts, you want to know when you get to a certain amount of t-shirts, when I should reorder the stock. So everyone, every product's going to be different for every company, depending on season, your high and low season. So there's a little equation Sean pulled up being very analytical as he is. So your reorder point equals your daily average usage times your lead time in days plus your safety stock. So if your safety stock is, let's say your safety stock is 10, you want to say, I always want to have at least 10 in stock because we may have people that walk in the store that we have like, you know, the random orders then you're going, that's, that's what they're talking about. They say safety stock. You're going to add that to your daily average usage multiplied by your lead time. Lead time meaning how long it takes your vendor to supply you that good. So so with Amazon, standard two days. Standard two days. Standard. Just throwing that out there. For all those that A little, little uh, example. Plus Amazon safety vendor. stock is the most important thing. You do not want your reorder point to be at zero. Um. So, and the whole reason for that is, you, I mean, the whole point of even doing the reorder points is so that you don't get surprised, as we were talking about surprises, right, about 
you're going, especially if you're going to high season coming up, like we're coming up on Black Friday here soon, Christmas, all the, anyone that has consumable goods, you're going to have to worry about that stuff. So reorder point one more time equals your daily average usage times your lead time in days plus your safety stock. So, um, all right, that's about it. I think that wraps it up. Anyone have anything else to say? No. Nope. Thank you guys yeah. for joining us. It's good to cool. hear from yeah, you. Yeah, it was awesome to have you guys on. Thanks, Thanks for, for having, having us. us. Yep, we'll have you again. We'll good see. radio voices. I'm just going to throw that out there. Yeah, yeah. I'm just I wanted Colby to use his radio voice the whole time. And he never did. Can you just actually like send us out with that? We're sending you, you out. Is there like some kind of catchphrase you have? For yeah, just thank out? you for yeah, listening. Yeah, go ahead. And Wiki Wow, we're <laughs> out of here. <laughs> <That's> fantastic. <laughs> <laughs>